Do you ever have that problem where you have a YouTube channel and you want to talk about something but don't have enough to say about it to justify an entire video? Well, I guess probably most of you don't have that problem, but I do. So now I'm proud to introduce Potpourri, a format where I can half-ass or even just one-quarter-ass several topics at once. First up, uninventing the wheel. I'm playing Dragon Age Inquisition right now and I like it. It's good. That's not really news, but whatever. But nowadays, every time I fire up a Bioware game, I'm reminded just how sick to death I am of the dialogue wheel. Nothing they do sticks in my craw as far up as this thing. I've known that since before I even knew what a craw was. Let me head off a familiar red herring at the pass. It's not the shape of it I don't like. It's not the fact that it's round that I don't like. It's the disconnect between the summaries and what's actually said. I know that the wheel follows a pattern, like often you have nice on top, funny in the middle, and mean on the bottom. And I know that there are icons that can give you a hint, too. But these hints are only occasionally useful, and there are way too many times when the short summary you can see on the wheel doesn't properly indicate the words, or especially the tone, of the actual response. In other words, you don't know what you're going to say before you say it. This is a big deal for me. I had the sense during conversations that I didn't really have control over my own character. And this is a role-playing game, so that's a problem. But it doesn't have to be. There's a pretty straightforward solution. The new Deus Ex game had a dialogue wheel, and hovering over the options would show the entire line. Simple, effective, and easy to implement. I mean, you have a subtitle option, so the text is already in the game. It doesn't even have to be default. You can make it a toggle in the options menu or something. Just make this one small change and make life more pleasant for all of us. Next up, Gamergate. Strap in, folks, we're doing this. And yes, I know I'm kind of late to the party. But there's a lot of misinformation out there about Gamergate, and someone has to correct it. First of all, it's not about excluding women. It's about pushing back against the corrosive effect that cultural Marxism is having on ethics and gaming j- I'm just messing with you. Oh man, you should have seen the look on your face just then. Classic. Seriously, Gamergate is a bunch of bullshit. I can't think of any other way to describe it. One of the reasons I'm doing this segment is because people have told me they've heard, like, third or fourth hand rumors that I'm a Gamergate supporter. Nope. Not even close. Sorry to disappoint. And I realize some of you may be disappointed. Some of you watching this, if you're still watching, may be sympathetic to the movement. Well, this is the point where you have to reevaluate what you think of me. Maybe you just think I was a shill all along, or a rad femme sleeper agent. Or maybe you think the social justice warrior somehow got to me, or threatened to blacklist me or something somehow. Or maybe you think I've just been misled, and that if I could only see the real Gamergate, I would be a supporter. If that's what you think, then that's what you think. I doubt I'm going to be able to convince you otherwise. But I would encourage you to at least briefly entertain the possibility that the reason I'm calling Gamergate bullshit is because that's what it actually is. Believe me, I looked into as much of this stuff as I could stand. I looked at the diagrams, I watched the videos, I went to 4chan, and then later to 8chan, and I went to Kotaku in action, and I read all the things I was told to read. I tried, folks. I really sincerely tried to find some there there, and I just couldn't. Virtually every single grievance and accusation made was either demonstrably false, ridiculous, trivial, or some combination of the three. If there's a worthy cause buried somewhere underneath all this hot air, then it's buried too deep for me to find it. Maybe that's because I'm stupid, or brainwashed, or beta, or what have you. Whatever the reason, I'm not one of you. I'm just not. How did I fail women's studies? I love bitches! And now, non-voiced games. Here's a couple of other things I've played lately. Wasteland 2 and the Dragonfall Director's Cut. Wasteland, overall, was good. Strong in some areas, weak in others, but good overall. Dragonfall was very good. It caught me off guard a bit to realize it's one of the best RPGs I've played in a while. Neither game was working with a triple A-sized budget, so, unsurprisingly, neither game was fully voice acted. And I'm not sure exactly how to describe this, but both games had a certain heft or solidity to their writing. It may have just been a case of raw volume. After all, not having to worry about recording lines means you can add as much dialogue and flavor text as you want. But I also suspect it has to do with editing. I, and many of the writers I know, go through about a gazillion revisions between first draft and final. 
If writers know they have to have all their dialogue in the can and ready to go by a certain date, how could it not affect their working habits? What's more, the marginal cost of adding additional dialogue is much lower if it doesn't have to be recorded in a studio. Of course, this is largely guesswork on my part, but while playing Dragonfall I had some long, detailed conversations with Algernon about things of relatively minor importance to the game, conversations that I suspect wouldn't have been in the game had it been fully voice acted. The current prevailing opinion in AAA development is that your game has to be fully voiced. It's become something that consumers expect. I'd rather it were regarded as a trade-off. Voice acting adds another layer of polish, yes, and often a good performance can add to what's written on the page. But it also puts practical constraints on the writing process, limiting its potential. It's probably not possible to unring this particular bell at this stage. But I hope that Kickstarter-level teams, for lack of a better term, continue to make games that are not fully voiced, as a way of letting their writers off the leash. Next up. It's been a long time since the last time I checked my YouTube mail. I kept putting it off, and it kept piling up and piling up, and it seemed like if I answered some of it, I'd have to answer all of it, and I was busy, and well, I haven't checked it in months. If you sent me a message and I didn't respond, that's why. It's not because I hate you. I'm off to do Christmas stuff for a couple weeks, but when I get back I'll start reading it again. I'll also start putting out videos again. I have three of them, like 90% done, and I hope to put them all out in January. Until then, enjoy the holidays.